Well, good morning and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now it's Sunday morning and it's just before 8 a.m. in the morning. And uh, I'm just looking at the Phragmopediums now because uh, if you remember, I repotted them all because they were having that trouble with fungus. They're looking much better now. They started off with some new growth. And uh, I promise that today I will give them the first feed of fish blood and bone. So that's what I'm going to do today. I've got a lot to do and uh, since I've repotted them I've been doing remoting them with nothing only RO water. Now I can't keep doing that because the RO water is completely dead and doesn't contain anything. So we've just been relying on what's in the uh, in the bark for the last uh, fortnight. So what I'll do now, I'll start fe feeding these with the uh, fish blood and bone, just a teaspoonful sprinkled over the top and uh, that'll do until next December, something like that. Well, we'll start off by looking at this plant first and this is a Phragmopedium uh, Caudatum crossed by uh, Grandi and uh, that's been quite odd but it's looking clean now and if you look down there you can see a couple of new growths coming on so the fish blood and bone should bring those on and that's a lovely lovely plant where the sepals will grow to oh well over two and a half feet long this is a Phragmopedium lasverinus, cross between Cavacii and, uh, oh, what's that other one? Oh, I've just forgotten at the moment. I don't know whether I've got it written on the back or not. Oh no, it's Sargentianum, I've just remembered. So these get very, very big plants. This was only a small one and uh, it's growing very well. So it was attacked by the fungus and uh, I've had to cut and chop into a lot of leaves, but fortunately in this growth here there's a new leaf coming up that looks clean. I had a lot of trouble with uh, the new leaves coming up, but they were black. And uh, a lot of people, or a lot of books, said that's sure to calcium, but I can't see it really. Maybe some uh, high humidity in here with... Uh, the humidity getting into the crown of the plant, I think that that's more likely what caused it. This is another nice plant and you can see the trouble I've had with the leaves, all the marks and this is a cross between uh, Cavacii and the Living Fire. Not flowered yet but growing very well. Uh, it's got uh, well, that's a new growth. There's a new growth there, and there's a new one coming up right at the bottom there. So these should come on a bungle now with a bit of nice weather. Although it's just before I say eight o'clock this morning, and it's point the language is bloody freezing out here. It's about nine degrees. Here we are. I found the label, and don't ask me to pronounce this. Zeruiacoianum, something like that. But that's the Paraflora's Saltambico. And here's another big plant, I've shown you this one before, the Richteri. The only one I have had in flower this year. And there's about three flowers dropped off already, and there's five spikes on it. Another one there. Another one there, another one here, that's four, and another one down there where the uh, the leaves are stopping the flower coming out properly, here. Well that wants a bit of fish blood and bone on it, so uh, 
we'll get that started and uh, and then we'll give them a, go, a good watering afterwards. I mean some of the uh, fish blood and bone will be washed out but quite a bit of it will cling to the uh, to the bark and it will last the plant it lasts the plant six months before it needs doing again. So I've got the fish blood and bone here and uh, we'll just give it a teaspoonful. Nice little sprinkle. Try not to touch the plant. And there we are, that's one done. And we've got the salt and bico. This there. Another teaspoonful. another one done. So I've got about, uh, I don't know, 20, 25 to do up to now. So uh, I won't show you any of that. I'll just do the watering afterwards. But if I come across anything as I'm doing it that I think you should see, then uh, I will show you that. Well, I've got some more old water here. I've just taken the chill off it because it's cold in here. And the temperature of the water is probably about uh, 14, 16 degrees at the most. And uh, I do that because when you're having phragmopediums, what they don't like is warm roots. They like the roots to always be cool. And they're always cool if you keep the feet wet. So uh, try not to let the roots of your phragmopediums uh, become warm. Right, we'll just water these. Just water the fish blood and bone in. Mind you, these have been watering every three days because they'll stand it. One. And there's a big richer eye. Oh, this takes some holding. Water that one in. Oh, you've got to be tarzan to keep hold of this one. all the way around. There we are. Oh, I had to pull that one down. And if the flags are much smaller than this, you know, I'll give them half a teaspoonful. Don't give them a full teaspoonful like you give the uh, adult plants. Well, that's all the Phragmopediums done now. They've all been watered, they've all had the fish blood and bone. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I've always been successful with it, but uh, over the last two years, I think I've been a bit lackadaisical, if you know what I mean. And it hasn't uh, helped the plants at all. So hopefully this time I've done it correctly. Well, I know I've done it correctly this time, so we'll watch the plants come on. And uh, once they get used to this fish blood and bone, you can almost hear them growing. Anyhow, thanks very much for watching, thanks to all my subscribers, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.